car is so different from the M2 in so many ways. It's just an entirely different animal. This steering wheel, man, the steering wheel feels so good in this car. Wish I could put this steering wheel in my M2. Just like the shape of it and the style of it. I love, I love this steering wheel. I spent a few hours, a good chunk of Sunday, cleaning this thing up. And um, actually it might rain today, so I might end up cleaning it again before I send it to the new owner. But I wanted to take it to the shop and just have it looked over one last time and make sure that everything was tip top shape good to go for the new owners. Um, I just like to make sure that the cars, anytime I send them out of my possession, that I have documentation of the car being in, in really good condition and there's no surprises. So many people hate on these cup holders and I absolutely love them. All right, so we're obviously caffeinated. Let's uh, throttle the shop. You know you're in the South when you've got Chick-fil-A everywhere. This place is like a religion down here, man. People love that Chick-fil-A. Be lines and lines of people trying to get this stuff. <laughs> I don't really get down with it. I mean, I've had it before, it's pretty good, but it's not um, not really my thing. All right, time to hit the road. Hit the road with this snack machine. Man, I'm, I'm actually gonna miss this car a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I will miss this car, but we'll own another one someday. So it's all good. Got to make moves, got to make decisions to get to bigger places sometimes that aren't the easiest. That's just part of it. And um, this is one of those decisions. So I'm confident in it. I think it's going to be for the better. But this is a sick car. And the gentleman who bought it is definitely getting a great package. That's for sure. So I've also been filming the last two videos on my GoPro, which is a little bit different but I wanted to try this out for a little bit. I am gonna go back to my other camera, but I'm waiting on uh, a part to come in for it because the camera was having some issues, like processing issues, and the all the footage was getting kind of like laggy and falling behind the audio. So I looked into it and I think I figured it out. But um, the new part comes today. We'll check it out and see how it goes. I don't mind the GoPro. I think the GoPros are actually really good quality for what they are. It's just, it's just different. It's just a different style of, of making videos because you can't see yourself. The thing I like about having the little GoPro is it's really convenient. Like it's super small, fits anywhere. The camera is kind of like a production. Like you gotta bring this big camera. It's got a mic hanging off of it. It's kind of like a lot of stuff to tote around, especially when you're doing videos all the time. I love the convenience of this little GoPro. It's pretty, it's pretty sweet and the quality is really good. So I will continue doing some videos with the GoPro, but uh, my main my main thing is going to be the uh, the Canon, obviously, because the Canon just looks really good, and I'm I'm super used to using it. It's nice to see yourself too, because you don't know you don't really know what you're you're filming right now. So I talked to the new owner or the buyer, I should say, uh, yesterday on the phone. Really, really great guy. He's super excited to own the car. It sounds like he's it sounds like it's going to the right person. He's uh, he's definitely an enthusiast. He has an R8, and he used to own an E90 M3. Sold it, missed it, and wants a new one. And that's honestly, I hear so many people that say that that they owned one at some point in time and they missed it and now they're back in the market for a clean one. And I'm sure that that's gonna be me down the line because once I have more room, I will get I will get another one uh, for sure, 100%. This has been one of my favorite cars that I've ever owned and it's just so, it's so unique. But right now I don't have, I don't have the, um, I don't have the space for three cars and I am looking at getting another car for the channel. So. I don't have the space for three cars right now. And until I buy a house that has a big enough garage, uh, it's, I just gotta keep it, I gotta keep flipping them out. So that's kind of the case with the whole thing, but it's okay. I've, I've had my time with this car. Um, I've done a lot of work to it, had a lot of fun with it, driven it. Um, I've gotten to learn the engine and the car quite a bit. So I love this thing, man. It's just such a, it's such a unique car. And I know I've told you guys over and over again, if you have the opportunity, make sure you drive one of these cars with an S65 because it's just such a different experience compared to any other BMW. And anyone who has 
the S65 knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but right now we're focusing on the M2. So M2 content's heavy right now. I got so much stuff going down with that car, you guys. So much. Like, it's crazy. And we're also coming up on car show season where I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling this year and taking the M2 to places. So I'm like crunch mode. I'm trying to get as much stuff done on the M2 as possible and get it show ready for basically the whole summer. And we're just going to be taking that thing all around in different car shows. The Keys Auto Show 2020. I'm going to be up there. Uh, I'm going to import Alliance in Atlanta with M2 Ghost. Going to be down there. And I'm also going to be heading out to Beamer Fest in California. However, I don't know that I'll have the M2 with me. I might just go out there and just like vlog and see people. Um, that's my favorite part about that stuff. Like I get to meet everyone that I talk to online because I talk to a lot, a lot of different people on Instagram that I don't really know. And it's, it's great to put faces to the IG handles, you know. So I am definitely going to be out at Beamer Fest. I think I'm heading out with Brian and those guys with Keys Motorsports. So we'll just be, we'll just be mobbing around with cameras in our face. And man, I can't wait to meet everyone who's out on the West Coast. But yeah, so back to this car. The, the new owner is definitely someone who's going to be taking care of the car. And he's got, it sounds like he has big plans for it. He's putting on a big brake kit. He wants to do a supercharger. He definitely knows the E90 platform well. He, he's had, like I said before, he's had one of these cars. He's owned one in the past and he knows what to look for he knows the problematic areas and that's the great thing about this car in particular all of those problematic areas were already addressed so this is just a great canvas or you know just a great plate for anyone to get into that's it's got the perfect bones it's got the perfect skeleton because everything is just solid I did all the work so all you have to do is buy the car and drive it so <laughs> So, but I do like to do a, anytime I sell the car, I always have it checked out by the shop and um, just get it, just get a once over, make sure it looks good for the person. And that just puts confidence in me as a seller that nothing will, no surprises will pop up when he does get the car. And it also puts confidence in him that he won't get any surprises when he gets the car. So this is something that I always do. I just pay for it. Uh, I just have them do a full PP, basically a PPI. Um, I have them do a full PPI on my end for my car that I'm selling. And I know that that's kind of unique, that maybe a lot of people wouldn't do that. Maybe the buyer would only do that. I'm still in communication with everyone that I've sold the car to. So, and I still, I talk to them all the time. I text them, um, they send me photos of the car. So I like to keep that relationship there. And I think that it's important and that it goes a long way when you do these kind of things. When you look into the car, just make sure that it, you just look it over, make sure everything is good for the buyer. Because I, if I were in their position, like I would be so bummed if I got the car and it wasn't what, what someone said it was. And I, we've all been there. Like I, I know I've been there for sure. And I know uh, a couple of my friends have been there as well. And there's nothing worse than committing to something and finding out that you were lied to or it's just not exactly um, what the person said. So. So I have, uh, I've gone over everything with the new buyer and he's, man, he's super stoked to get this car. He can't wait. Um, I'm excited for him. I'm excited to see what happens with the car, where it goes in its next life. This car is, uh, man, it's, it's a tough one to sell, especially when I open the door, that garage and I see it. And, uh, the F30, I was, I mean, I had that car for a long time, man. I had the, I had the F30 for uh, four years or something like that. Um, way longer than any car I've ever owned. I've, I've never owned a car longer than a year. Like I keep a car for a year and I get rid of it. But, um, this car, I've only had it for six months, which is a very, very short amount of time for, uh, for what I usually own a car for. That's a pretty short amount of time. So kind of, kind of feels early, but, um, the price is right and it's real. I can't pass it up. So it's, uh, it's just, the, it's the smart move. It really is the smart move. So I'm just going to we're gonna let it go. We're gonna keep moving, boys and girls. That's the way to go. It's easy for me to make these decisions because, like I said before, I really don't get like too emotionally attached with these cars. Um, they're just projects, and we just build them up. And there's always more of them out there, and there will always be more projects. So, at some point in time, I will have a house. I'll have more room, and I'll have all the cars that I want. So, uh, so yeah. So I'm just taking a little drive right now, just enjoying it and. Um, hopefully everything goes well at the shop. Keep you guys informed. All right. 
Let's head in. PPI complete. The car got the clean bill of health. <laughs> car got the clean bill of health and we're gonna, we're gonna send her off on our way. If you guys need to shop in Charlotte, hit up Dynamic Auto Tune. Help you out with whatever you need. She's clean. She is spotless, which I kind of already knew that, but that's, I mean, that's gonna be it then. That's all she wrote, man. Aw. Bummer. Not a bummer. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. But um, yeah, man, she's uh, officially, officially sold. So this car will likely leave this week. I think we're just waiting on him to set up the transport details, but um, yeah, she's gonna go this week. And it's on to searching for the next car. We'll see what happens. So I'm still waiting on the exhaust to come for the M2. Um, I don't really know when it's gonna come. So what I think I'm gonna do is I have an opportunity to buy a dine-in exhaust system that Dynamic has on the wall. I could put it on like right now. And I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. It's a really nice exhaust system. It sounds really good. And if I don't like it, I can always get rid of it down the road once I do get my Valtronic exhaust system. But my only fear is I don't know when the Valtronic exhaust system is going to arrive. And we have a bunch of shows coming up that I can't, I can't be rocking the stock exhaust with that giant diffuser. It just looks absolutely ridiculous. So I'm also doing all the performance modifications soon and I want, I definitely want to have the exhaust as a part of that. So I think, I think I might go in there this week, maybe Friday and get the exhaust done on the M2. So we can just liven it up. On to the next thing, man. It's just one thing after another. I have some crazy, crazy stuff coming for the M2. I got the side skirt extensions are coming. The thing with the side skirt extensions, uh, they didn't really have the ones that I wanted initially. So the ones I got are a little bit different, a little bit out of my comfort zone. They have a little bit more like styling to them, but it might be cool. If I don't like them, I can always change them out. But we'll see, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of all the things, like bringing you guys up to speed with everything. I know this vlog is pretty random today, but sometimes it's good to just chat with you guys and let you know what's going on. And I figured why not just bring you guys along for the ride, like the final ride in the M3, and kind of chat with you about everything that's going on with both cars. Um, so obviously this car's going, and then the M2, I also have some other sick parts that are coming for the car that are going to be probably a little bit controversial, but it's gonna be, gonna be good. We're gonna set that thing apart from any other M2. Anyways guys, I'm gonna head back to the house and get some work done. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff I gotta get done before this afternoon. Got some meetings tonight. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. But I wanted to personally thank you guys for just being a part of this little M3 journey. It's been a blast, man. This this car is just, this car is sick. I love it. And good luck to the new owner. He doesn't have an Instagram or a YouTube or anything like that. So unfortunately, um, he did say he will be sending me like photos of it as he does stuff to it, which is cool And I'll definitely share those with you guys But as far as the future of the car, I think that he kind of just wants to remain private and I respect that privacy 100% so um, But trust it is going to someone who knows about cars and takes care of cars meticulously And it will have the proper future. So anyways, thank you guys for watching Please do consider subscribing comment down below like this video hit that bell notification just like that, vlog's over, we're out.